I am going to rant a little bit. Uh, as I've talked about on this channel, uh, back in college, I was uh, fortunate or maybe unfortunate to have studied mathematics. I uh, majored in mathematics uh, and computer science too as well. So combined, it was a field of numerical computation, which was very novel at the time, combining the best of mathematics and also computer science. And from the mathematics days, there was this tool that I saw that was, at this time, to me, one of the most spectacular, innovative uh, tools I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about Wikipedia or I'm not talking about Google. What I'm talking about is Wolfram Alpha. And now, if you've never heard about Wolfram Alpha, I'm not going to fault you for it. Uh, it's a, a computational intelligence engine. It's been around for a while. I'm talking about this has been around uh, since I was in college. And... Uh, uh, it's it's gotten better over the years, uh, just by by looking at it. So recently, I was looking on doing research on something else, and for some reason, this just popped up and sent me down the rabbit hole of saying, "Hey, let's make a video about this on the channel." So Wolfram Alpha is what we're talking about uh, here today. It's been around for a while, and we're gonna go through, take a look at it. If you've never heard about it, I highly encourage you. It's one of those nifty tools that. Uh, either might be useful for you or might be useful if you have kids and they're going to high school or going to be going to college too at some point. I, I, would, I don't want to put my bets here, but I'm guessing at some point they're going to run across Wolfram Afra. And if you are the parent or somebody who knows it, I think that would add a lot of value. So Wolfram Alpha, you can access it uh, here or on the website. And you basically, uh, you, you come into Wolfram Alpha, you put in questions and it gives you answers. Not like Google, right? If you think about what Google does is it's indexed a bunch of documents. You you put in your, your query, it, it looks through its index of documents and it tells you the result, it gives you the results. Even though they've, they've kind of made things, uh, made things a little bit more intelligent with their knowledge graphs and all of that. But the foundational level, it's not a computational engine, which is what Wolfram Alpha uh, is positing to be. So here you can come into Wolfram Alpha and ask questions, and it should solve that for you. So a very simple question could be, say, uh, seven, and they really are good. And, uh, and the reason why I knew this from my math days was because of this math, uh, uh, it's math capability. So you can put in questions with natural language, and Wolfram Alpha is going to solve that for you. By the way, Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram, I believe, is the person who started it. Um, his name might be Stephen Wolfram, if I'm not, if I'm getting that right. And Alpha is basically, it's been in Alpha for, for a while, right? So think about products go from Alpha to Beta and whatever comes after that to GA. Uh, this has been in Alpha ever since 1988 or whenever they started this. And uh, I encountered it back in college. So that's where you see the Wolfram Alpha. Uh, but going back here, uh, you put in questions with natural language. It really has a good natural language engine. And it gives you the result, but not just the answer, right? Seven times five. Uh, if I went to Google and I did seven times five, for example, let's go to Google and do seven times five. It can give you the result. But the difference between this and what you get from Wolfram Alpha is it just gives you a more context uh, to that. It gives you more context, uh, more flavor. At least that's what it, it, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, its position uh, to, to be. All right, so uh, let's go back uh, here. And they also have things categorized uh, into different areas. Uh, if you want to get step-by-step -step solution, so we did four times seven, you can get a result. Let's do uh, this. Let's just take this example here that they have. So if you are doing some algebra in grade school, at some point, they're going to give you something like this to solve, right? Think about board mass and how do you solve something like this? We, Let's actually try Google just for once here. I haven't tried this, but let's just try this in Google. Uh, Google, it seems to give us a result. I don't know if this is correct or not. I haven't tried it, but it gives us uh, apparently a result. And is that the same 33.16? Yep, that's uh, the same uh, result. But the difference is how did this get to the result? How did Google get to the result? It's not a computational engine. I don't know how Google got this result, but it's not a computational engine. Wolfram Alpha gives you the result, but also the steps on how it took uh, to get to that result. So if you imagine you have a, a youngster that is learning and they want to understand the steps on how to get there, uh, this uh, 
provides more context more so than you get uh, just naturally with uh, uh, with Google you can do math uh, math equations so let's take um, if you want to put in math uh, equations they have a, a keyboard for for typing if you want to do uh, integrals uh, who remembers integrals right x the x the y and all that stuff <laughs> right you can go in and, and do all of that I'm, and i'm just showing the functionalities here so for the average day person run of the mill uh, this might not be very useful to you but in academia i can say this is a big this is a this is a big deal uh, for folks that are looking at it now why did this really pick my my interest uh, again on, on one of the, uh, uh, this video because what we're seeing is that the rise of the GPT-3s and the language models of the world is making something like Wolfram Alpha almost fall to the to, to the backside, at least in my in my purview, in my in my humble opinion. Uh, because with GPT-3 and those language models, you can ask a question and you get long form text, natural language, right? So I haven't really tried the um, uh, uh, the, the the natural language processing here, but let's just try something, right? Uh, a poem by Shakespeare, if I spell that correctly. I, I think it might not even be able to give me any results here, right? But William Shakespeare is a person. It, it does give us some good information and, and some context, um, but not very different than than uh, than Google. If I was just going to search about Shakespeare, you're better off uh, searching on Google to get the, the results, right, and the page pages and the page ranks from there. Now, if you want to write, which is natural language, then you're going to be looking at a transformer. You're going to be looking at the, a, a pre-trained model like GPT-3, GPT-Neo, GPT-J, and all of that. Uh, so now the question is, where does this Wolfram Alpha really falls? I haven't tried GPT-3 for math questions compared to what Wolfram Alpha would do. That's maybe something I, I might do to compare the two, not for language processing, but for actual math solving. And this is where I think Wolf or Alpha really shines. So um, if you are into AI and machine learning and deep learning and all of that, and NLP, um, what Wolfram Alpha has done, I think is something to pay attention to. I, I would consider them the, the OGs, right? The, the folks that have been, at least from, again, from my purview, that have been doing something that I always thought was, that was kind of cool, or, you know, uh looking at what they did from from college and you can plug in plug in the math equation and get a solution just the level of nlp at that time to take your math problem and then go ahead to solve it with step by step was was cool at this time now is this one of those things that i don't know the technical implementation of this it sounds like this is built on a a bunch of um uh different capabilities and there's actually uh, a Q and A here, which I was just reading through. Uh, it's uh, the Q and A is great. So if you go on the website I'll, and you're kind of curious about this, um, I'll recommend you check out this Q and A uh, on the website. It, it talks about how the, it's a search engine. But the thing that, of course, will interest me from something like this is uh, not just the data, uh, is the development, business, the technology, right? Of course, I care. I care more about the technology. Uh, and what's going on behind the scenes? Why is this cool? What's going on uh, to make this happen? So what is the core technology of, of Wolfram Alpha? Is this a language model? Is this a bunch of models? Uh, I want to know more, right, as you can imagine. So here it says there are many parts, uh, each with uh, significant innovations. Four key areas are data curation, which makes sense, right? Think about like the Shakespeare example there. It has to have some indexing happening uh, similar to Google to get that data uh, searchable. Uh, there is the, uh, the ability to process algorithms and the computational side of things to, to solve problems. So there is some innovation there. Again, what exactly is go going underneath? I don't know. And how has it changed over the years? That's something I don't know. Uh, if there's a white paper, I'll be more than happy to read that and, and see. Uh, and then, the, of course, there's the linguistic processing. So this is your NLP and being able to write NLP and it, it detects that and translate that into solving actual problems. That's cool. And then the automated pipelines and, and the presentation, which is uh, once you solve a problem, um, then it gives a result. So let's see. Are there any examples of calculus derivative of 
uh, x uh, fold sine x all right so calculus students whoof i just remember the days of, of calculus and you have to go in and you do all of this right now not only does it give it to you so think about the nlp happening here to translate that uh think about the presentation it, it graphs all of that for whatever thing let's do instead of four let's do say 14 right it's gonna graph all that so there's some presentation happening there um and then uh there is uh getting data behind the scenes to make this possible so they seem to be doing a lot of you know, interesting things so to, to make this happen and that's why i think uh, uh this really again piqued my interest you know and it, it's just being overshadowed now, i don't hear a lot of people talking about wolfram alpha um there is a, a podcast on um lex friedman which i um i did bookmark i haven't watched that podcast yet and i have to go back and watch that episode on the founder I th again i think that name is steven wolfram i should have gotten that uh, uh before recording the video uh but search for that founder he he was on uh, rec uh lex friedman who makes uh he talks about ai and he's a has a really good podcast kind of up there with uh joe rogan's of the world so check out our podcast where uh, uh the founder uh, wolfram was there talking about some of what they've done and the technology here is um is is uh, uh is is what powers wolfram alpha and makes that possible they also have ai uh, apis that could be used so you can embed this into your own products what also caught my attention there was the there is a paid version now i'm i'm sure let's let's try something here let's try uh, a, a question which I, I i tried before so the question is uh apply um bottom hat transform uh to uh, a trumpet image so this is not just nlp so there's nlp going here right you can imagine throwing this question to gpt3 or one of the uh, transformers out there and I, I don't know what it will come back to you but what do you think will come come up when we ask a question like this for, for this uh for this model right so apply bottom hat so even if i'm not with bottom hat transform it's um it's kind of some processing of highlighting dark spots within an image so uh if you say you had a, an image of a galaxy and uh, some spots are, are dark and you want to highlight that you're almost inver inverting the 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 light processing the the signals coming from there so that's basically what bottom heart transform is google that if you know from now the point here is if we run something like this uh, uh from a bottom heart transform it takes some trumpet right because it's, it's asking about the trumpet it takes that trumpet and it inverts that and it gives us a, uh, uh, it, it applies a bottom hat transform and it gives us a result. All right. So let me see. So trumpet is an example. What happens if we do a uh, galaxy here? Would, what would this give me? I, I didn't try this. All right. So it does, it does give, it does give that. All right. So, um and typically you see bottom hat transforms uh, here or top hat transform too is, is the opposite of that uh it takes that and there are dark spots because if a, a telescope is taking this image um you can't really see you can't really see this right but once you invert that and highlight the dark spots with the with the transform you can it's clearer for you to see uh see see the image the stars and the, the different uh uh, objects out there so uh this is interesting now what of course what i wanted to do with this was all right if they do that can i go ahead and upload my own image but apparently i can do it so you might require a paid version to to do something like this but what fasc fascinates me most on this is the computational engine side of things so i, I just it's a uh, it's a little bit nostalgic to to see um the the the, the all the the fanfare going to to the transformers uh, and for good reasons because there's a lot of innovation happening there but this wolfram alpha has been around for, for a very long time and i really encourage you to just check it out play with it um if if nothing else i think it could just be a uh, one of those platforms you come in there to 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 learn and, and tinker I know not everybody's a nerd like uh, like me, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't hurt to play with it. So coming here, it talks about um, uh, a tour. So this is a page for a tour. Um, 
you can uh, do analyze molecules. You can come in, get step by step. So these are basically use cases that uh, you could use uh, Wolfram Alpha for. At home, you can uh, put in uh, 10 peanuts of M&M. Let's see. <laughs> this is interesting. So 10 peanuts of M&M. How many calories does that have? Uh, let's go to let's go to natural language uh, we would run that all right my screen doesn't seem to be behaving here so let's just reset everything back so 10 peanuts of m m and it, it does give us the it does give you the the nutritional facts of that all right how accurate is this so when was that updated uh, i i have no idea all right um uh, one tilapia. Hmm. It does give us some some interesting information. Once, uh, but this is for steak. This is for steak. This is not for for tilapia. So, but just again, something to to play with. Um, if we go back here. Uh, there's also a place study chart. You can solve crossword puzzles, uh, things about uh, culture, people, history, technology, computational sciences, and just uh, and just way more, right? Just way more uh, things that you can you can do. And then there's of course there's a block here too as well about the different innovations that are happening in the space. Um, yeah, Stephen Wolfram. That's what I thought. That's the name of, uh, I believe that's the, the founder, Stephen Wolfram. Since 1988, this has been, ar uh, been around. So uh, it's been around for a while. If, you, if you're in the space of, of machine learning and AI or just computational sciences as a whole, or just technology uh, as a whole, Wolfram Alpha is something that uh, I don't think uh, you'll be forgiven if you don't know uh, or haven't heard about this. So that's why we're surfacing uh, this up on the channel and bringing this up. Uh, check it out. If uh, have you used Wolfram Alpha in in the past? Do you uh, uh, is this pretty cool, or am I making a big deal out of nothing? I think it's a it's a very nifty website. I uh, that I did enjoy back in my college days, um, and I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna keep an eye, and I'm gonna go back and listen to that talk uh, from um, from Lex uh, Friedman's uh, podcast that uh, Stephen uh, Stephen was there. Stephen Wolfram was there talking to just get an update. Uh, just because this space, there's so much going on, NLP and machine learning, deep, uh, uh, deep uh, network, neural networks and CNNs and GANs and you name it. Um, and Wolfram Alpha already has that name. And if they could embed some of that naturally into their product, again, I don't know the exact technology and what they're building on. Maybe they did GANs or neural nets long time ago before, or, or transformers long time before everybody figured it out. I don't know how they make this all work. But uh, it will be very interesting to to see where this all goes uh, as we go. But I, I think it's a, it's a just a little nifty, um, not a little bit, just a very nifty uh, 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 product uh, to check out and to have uh, on your list. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, as always, uh, it's amazing for everyone sticking to the end. Uh, you have been very awesome. I have been through. I will 